Barksdale, Stringer Bell, and the new power. Barksdale has 10 stairwells and five high-rises going 24-7 for dope and coke, and they drop 10 or 12 bodies in as many months. How do you know this? Everybody knows. These guys are good. They're deep. They're organized. What do you suggest? Surveillance teams. DNR. Economic insight can come from anywhere. And sometimes, insights are better expressed by artists than economists or analysts. I think economics is gangster science. Peter Antonioni, who teaches economics at University College London, and who also wrote Economics for Dummies, isn't afraid to explore unorthodox methods of explaining economic theory. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I mean, uh, Stringer is fascinating. I mean, he's not, he's not a nice person, but, you know, it's a fascinating character. And no, last year's popular and equally unorthodox Kilkenomics Festival in Kilkenny, Ireland, where economists rub shoulders with stand-up comedians, and no one is quite sure which is which, Peter Antonioni gave sell-out performances, otherwise known as lectures, on economics as explained by TV's The Wire and Game of Thrones. You know, you can see resonances from the rise of Renaissance banking in, um, in Venice. Mm. Um, you've got, uh, you know, a lot of the history of the Wars of the Roses and where kings and queens borrowed from. It might seem bizarre, but Antonioni is referencing the successful television series Game of Thrones in explaining economic theory. He believes the long-form television program best reflects today's world. Um, you know, you've, you've got a hell of a lot of really good stuff on how medieval warfare actually was, yeah. which is that fights didn't happen all that long on the battlefield. Mm. Uh, they usually ended with one side or the other running away, mm. and a lot of the time it was more chevauché, you yeah. know, sort of scorched earth tactics enforced against the civilian population. Mm. So he gets all of that right. But the thing I think that's really hooking me and hooking a lot of other people is how the Machiavellian nature of this, you know, the quest for the Iron Throne is kind of something that you know, resonates with how do you survive in a corporation? How do you get to the top in this? Yeah. Do you even want to? What's well, the penalty question, of staying you, out of the game? Do you really, really want to get Can it? you stay out of yeah, the game? Yeah. And, that, and those are really, uh, really actually you know, timeless questions. As a professor of economics, part of his problem is that economic tools are not so easily communicated. So he employs the popular TV series in transmitting his knowledge and insights to students, as well as the audience of Kilkenomics, in a way that they can immediately understand and relate to. Mm. So you've got, you know, you start off with the drugs. Oh, okay, fine, it's cops and robbers. The Wire, another series Peter Antonioni employs to describe economic theory, illustrates something economists have trouble with, the transitional costs of industrial transformations. The intangibles, that is, the traumatic costs borne by families and communities, can't really be measured until they come out in data such as the rising rates of delinquency or mental health. The wire which takes place in the crumbling moral framework of the US city of Baltimore dramatizes these social consequences and forces economists to change cost accounting models. Even there, we've got a set of private managerial incentives, moral lines decided by managers that are actually not fitting the needs of the city. They are completely private. They are not, they are not collective things. But you've also got to think about, well, the decline of the working class, the docks, Frank Sabotka. Okay, even there, the seeds have been planted. Why is this happening? Leadership. Leadership failure of Carchetti in season three, as he, you know, gets the mayor and what happens? He can't. He's a bag carrier for who, whoever you know seems to have power over him. Peter Antonioni believes the Wire dramatizes key themes economists study, particularly all that can go wrong with a city's ecosystem. The series shows how the rot starts in the system with the cops and dealers, then spirals out to embrace all aspects of the city including the decline of the working class and political institutions, the school system, judiciary and media. Along the way, it illustrates such standard economic fare as the prisoner dilemma, as well as offering a twist on Nash's equilibrium. What could be more the subject of economics than the conflict between collective and private interests? In the end, is it really so strange that the dynamics of top-notch television series illustrate equally dramatic market forces? Need and power, tension and suspense, trust against the equilibrium of the financial status quo, which, when it shifts, carries us away in its slipstream, leaving winners, losers and casualties in its wake. You know, he's got the whole thing about how, you know, um, the violence brings the bodies and bodies bring 5-0. But then the, the best characters are the most punished in it, which yeah. 
you know, this is Baltimore, the gods will not save you. Nobody wanted this. I dug this happen.